I'm here in the family shop and I'm actually waiting for my brothers to come and work, but <laughs> there are no customers, <laughs> so I thought about telling you a story. When I was a kid, I've always hated working in here. And guess what? Nothing changed, nothing changed at all. <laughs> I cannot stand this place, despite the fact that many, many customers, they do love me. I don't know, they say they love my smile, but with the masks nowadays, yes, I need to wear a mask when there is a customer coming inside. They will never see my smile. I'm really sorry for them. <laughs> In my life, I've never gotten free money and the only way to make money was to work in here by the way that one is my room when you spent your winter vacations in the shop making packages for customers well <laughs> you will not be a happy kid you will not be wanting to work in here as an adult and when i was about to finish high school there was the option of me spending the rest of my life in my place which would have completely, completely killed my vibe. This shop, it is also one of the main reasons I became a storyteller, a writer, because that's when I ran away from this shop during one of these winter vacations that I went upstairs and I started writing my first book. And I was imagining places, I was imagining freedom, but it was so hard to finish a book that I thought I need a huge, huge event in my life to actually have the greatest story ever. <laughs> what do you do if you want to create the best story ever? What do you do if you need a story? <laughs> well, uh, you make some events happen and I might have failed the last year of high school on purpose or simply, well, uh, I didn't want to study. I was skipping high school every day to go to the library to write. I was skipping high school every day to go to the cinema as much as possible. I was skipping high school to learn as much as possible about novels and writing and stories. But, well, I still wasn't able to finish my story. I still wasn't able to write that book. And therefore I found a way. <laughs> In a minute, I will tell you how I ran away from home trying to write the best book ever. But uh, in the meantime, let me tell you how to build believable characters thanks to Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creators. On Skillshare, you can explore new skills, deepen existing passions and get lost in creativity. This month, I've been following the class by Sabata here writing authentic fiction, how to build a believable character. She's an author that at some point realized that the characters of her own books needed to be deep in a bit. And uh, she now became very, very helpful to all the aspiring writers on Skillshare. There are like over 9,000 people following her class. Skillshare is curated specifically for learning, meaning that there are no ads and they are always adding new premium classes. So you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity gets you. Follow me too, thank you. <laughs> the first 1,000 people of my subscribers to click the link in description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. Skillshare tremendously helps the channel, so click the link in the description and let's get back to the video. So we were in the last year of high school. I thought I was going to become very, very successful at writing books and I wouldn't need to study anymore. I was skipping school so much that I barely got to the final exam. I went to do the writing exam, it went okay. I went to do the speaking exam, it went okay. Everything was okay, but wasn't enough. In Italy, to pass, you need at least a score of 60 out of 100. I got 58. I didn't pass. And I knew I was going to get such a low grade. And therefore, when I was back in my room upstairs, I started packing. I packed, I packed, I packed. And when I went to see the grades, so I was looking at the blackboard, I was watching all the grades, I found my grade and I was like, oh, Okay, I didn't pass. What do I do? Okay, I have a backpack on me. Let's go to the airport. 
I had a couple of friends with me and they were like, Michele, you are crazy, you are crazy, what are you doing, where are you going, you need to go back at home, you need to go back and study, you need to pass this exam. I'm like, no, no, I need to leave, I need to write the greatest story ever. <laughs> what the bullshit. And uh, somehow there was a friend, I think it was Ricardo, Ricardo told uh, to everyone else, uh, let him go. <laughs> so I got a train, I went to the airport, I got there, I found out that you can buy the tickets from uh, some companies, from some travel agency that they are already inside the airport, I didn't know it was possible. I found uh, the first flight available and the first flight was to Paris. <laughs> the mythical, mythical Paris that people visit more than Rome, Italy. I don't know why you guys spend uh, on average five days in Paris and three days in Rome. Something is messed up in your brain, but doesn't matter, doesn't matter. So I flew to Paris, I was in shorts, I had a shirt and uh, well, they lost my luggage. The reason they lost my luggage is because I went to the airport too late. I didn't go in advance, I just took the last flight available and uh, well, with the last flight available, uh, in the last moment, in the last minute, you always risk of your bag and not getting into the plane. It was so cold in Paris, I just remember that. I was sleeping in the airport and every seat had something like this, but tougher, not uh, this soft. And the chair was always divided, so it was uh, impossible to sleep. I had to learn from homeless people how to bend on these chairs, how to put a feet inside it so it would get stuck, you wouldn't fall down off the bench. This bench with these dividing handles, oh my gosh, they are so uncomfortable. All these poor homeless people, they cannot sleep normally because all these benches, they have these divisions. And I was feeling so bad about it. I was feeling so cold. I had no clothes. At some point, eight friends provided me a shirt and a toothbrush. But I needed my clothes. I didn't know how to sleep in Paris at night. So I was going back to the airport every day to sleep and I had no money. <laughs> I had very, very little money, so I didn't want to waste them. And when going back to the airport, at some point I met an Italian, and an Italian told me, I work at this airport, I can let you sleep illegally inside this room. It's the room where we pack stuff and so on. And I was like, okay, doesn't feel so safe. I bought a little backpack, I put inside my stuff uh, from Air France, I was still waiting for my bag. My bag never ever came. And... Uh, a few days later, I was like, Paris, even if it's July, it's way too cold. I cannot be here in shorts. I cannot be here just with a t-shirt plus the t-shirt of uh, Sky Team. Thank you to Air France. I was like, Paris, I need to abandon you. I'm not in love with you. You are not romantic enough to keep me alive in this cold weather, even in summer. And therefore, I took another flight and I went to Barcelona. In Barcelona, there were two problems. One, I couldn't sleep inside the airport because the airport was kind of far from the city, at least in my head. Two, there were so many mosquitoes. At night, they were biting me so much. Also, I was trying to survive from the cold weather, even if it was summer. It was warm enough, but at the same time, there were all these mosquitoes that I had to buy a jumper. I bought a jumper, my legs, they were out my arms, they were covered, my face was out. All the mosquitoes had beaten me all over the face, all over the legs. So I was changing location every night. I was sleeping near uh, La Rambla, then I was sleeping on the beach. I was sleeping everywhere and I was like, man, I probably do not smell so good. Uh, <laughs> At some point, the father of a friend was like, okay, Miguel, you need to go back home. And <laughs> I was like, my book is not ready yet. <laughs> he was like, you have no money, you better go back at home. And <laughs> in the meantime, my mother had called me. I was lying to her. I was telling her I was at the house of a friend and I was in Rome, Italy. She didn't know I was in Europe, but I think she got to realize that the background noise was probably the one of the airport. And when I was not desperate, when I realized that I had nothing else to do there in Barcelona. I had my book half written, even if it was a very short, a tiny, tiny book. I was like, yes, I'm finishing all my money. It's probably time to go back home. I had almost no food. I flew back to Italy with my last cash. And 
all my money made working in this shop they disappeared in a matter of a week i had no money i needed food a friend of mine came to a lake here in the our district a few kilometers from my house and he brought me some sandwiches <laughs> and i thanked him and i put him in the book and then i went back home i exactly entered from there the thing there was my father my mother uh i said nothing they said nothing i passed from here there was my tiny tiny little brother daniele now he's as tall as me and uh, they just told me all good i said yes i went back upstairs and i did unpack <laughs> and that's the book i wrote <laughs> this entire weird weird trip the book is called uh, in italiano fuga da casa escape from home run away from home and that's it for this video, thank you so much for watching, keep reading and believing in dreams, support my channel on Patreon, Paypal, Bitcoin as you prefer, ciao! The electricity broke, and now I fixed the cable, if I touch it I will die, but uh, at least now we're gonna have electricity again.